Hey there everybody, PT Pop here. All four loaves of my brain securely bound behind my back. And it's a beautiful day to make another video about call centers. Oh, the Lord's gonna strike me down with lightning. It's raining cats and dogs here. As you can see the thunder and lightning outside, I'm making another call center video about upselling. Stay tuned. At the tone, press one for murder. I'm gonna upsell you, I'm upselling you right now. Bill Murray and I are going to upsell you. You've gotten this video for free about upselling. Now for only $4.99, you can get Press One for Murder by Peter Tompkins, a.k.a. P.T. Pop, on Amazon in ebook and paperback. Get yours now. Say it with a smile. They always say, say it with a smile. Read this book to find out what really happens to Jeremy and his call center. It's right now for sale in ebook and in paperback. Ah, call centers, the love of my life. Upselling. Thank you to one of my viewers and hopefully a subscriber, Jason. Jason, I won't give out your last name because I don't know if you want to be known or not. But Jason, I hope you're a subscriber. If not, you better damn well subscribe now. Only kidding, Jason. It's a free world, or so they tell us. Here in America, that's that's the uh, that's the underlying story. It's a free world. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Ha, free. We're free here in America, but I can't swear here on YouTube. Can't talk like a man. Little plug for Gatorade here. I drink I drink Gatorade because it's thirst quenching. Um, Jason wrote to me on one of my videos and said, hey, why don't you do a video about call centers and how you're forced to upsell? And I think this is a great idea, Jason, because I had completely forgotten about upselling. I think I, I blacked it out of my mind. I blocked it out of my mind because I hate it so much. Oh, look at that. The rain is just pouring down the windows. Upselling, for those of you who have never worked in a call center, is when you call into a call center and the customer service rep will say, hey, Mr. Customer, I understand um, you called in about your balance. We've got your balance taken care of. Would you like a credit card today? We're offering 0% interest for six months and then it defaults to 14% after that. Doesn't that sound great? Okay, you wanna go ahead with that credit card? And the customer's like, "Uh, you wanna suck my pickle? And this is something you're forced to do. This is something that they make you do for some reason or another. I haven't figured out why. I'm going to close this damn window before I get electric my you did. Man, the rain's really pouring in this window. Really pouring in. Say hi to Mr. Murray. Hey, Bill. Bill, looking at you, buddy. Walter Maddow and Jack Lemmon, the odd couple. Two of my favorite movies, Stripes and uh, Odd Couple. Who's your friend? Who's your buddy? Where was I? Oh yeah, upselling. So you go into call center and you go into training and you have agreed to become a customer service representative. But they don't tell you always in the interview that on, on top of being a customer service representative, you have to sell. You have to become a salesperson. And they conveniently don't tell you this in the interview process because it's not for everybody. Sales is a skill. Sales is a skill and a tool that most people don't really have a good handle on. I have done sales, but it's not meant for everybody. But what happens is they'll, they'll bring all these people and they'll bring a, a training class and 30 people and say, surprise everybody, we're gonna do some sales on this in this class and everyone's like, oh, sales. So what they make you do is that they make you, they give you training for like two days to two weeks of training in a call center. And they make you learn the bank or the company, whatever company you're working for, make them make you learn their entire portfolio. You have to learn their portfolio inside and out in two days or two weeks. You have to talk about it intelligently, professionally, and coherently over the phone. You have to be on time to work, all the traditional things of working. You know, be on time for your breaks, be on time to work, you can't call in sick. You have to learn a script, you have to read the script verbatim. If you miss one word in the script, you're in trouble. If you don't know all the products, you're in trouble. 
Then on top of everything else they make, they throw at you, which is, as I've said, is like a full semester or two of college work in two days or two weeks. They make you sell. They make you upsell. And it's still sales. But they don't really show you how to do it. They don't train you. They don't um, go over the real scripting with you. They give you a basic, basic, like one or two line script. And as I said before, it's kind of like this. You call in. Hey, uh, my name is P.T. Pop. I'm calling you for my bank balance. How much do I have left in my checking account? Oh, hey, P.T. Pop. You've got 75 cents left in your checking account. Hey, I see you don't have our introductory MasterCard with 0% interest for the first six months and 14% thereafter. Let's get you signed up for that, okay? And I'm like, what? No, that's okay. Oh, no, really, sir. It's a great opportunity. You're going to be able to use it in vacations and overseas, and you'll be able to fly to the moon with it. Oh, no, that's okay. But most of the people that call in the call centers are not friendly. They're not in a good mood. At least these days they're not. They're very upset. So aside from being called a pickle sucker and being told your mother uh, smells of el um, elderberries and that you make love to, um, you know, concrete walls, you have to sell this person who's calling you dirty, filthy names. Oh, sir, I understand you're unhappy. I'm glad I could help you out today. Hey, would you like that new credit card that we have? It's great. Let me offer you, you know, to make up for the, the, for the unpleasant time you've had. Let's give you a new credit card at 0% interest. How about that? Okay, let's get you started. What's, what's your name and what's your social security number? You know, it's, it's total horse crap. And this isn't just in banking. They do it everywhere. You know, if you call into a cable company and you've got basic cable, the reps are trying to say, hey, sir, I see you've got basic cable. We're running a special right now for the next 90 days. You get it for $10 off. How about that? Let's get you started. When do you want, want it to, to start? Tomorrow? you got to assume the sale. you got to do all this stuff. You, 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 you've got to navigate. You've got to um, control the conversation when you start to sell, like, you, you try to get information from them by acting, asking open-ended questions, and then you control the direction of the conversation by uh, asking closed-ended questions. You know, you, you try to get the customer saying yes, yes, yes. You know, they call in and you're supposed to say, um, so you like our service? And they go, yes. Oh, good, I'm glad you like it. What do you like the most about it? Oh, good. That's a great channel, isn't it? Oh, good, yes. Oh, great weather we're having, isn't it? Yes. So, hey, I, I see you, you've been with us for 10 years. You're a great customer. See, so you like our service. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, good. Let's get you set up. What we're going to do for our, for our longtime 10-year customers, we're going to offer you a credit card at 0% interest for the first six months. Okay, let's get you started on that. What's your mailing address? Would you like me to send that credit card to you? What? I mean, some people are like, well, sure, I'll take that credit card. That's a good idea there, sir. You send that off on out to me and I'll go start buying some crack down on the corner with it. But it doesn't ever work that. It's that simple. Most people are like, what did you try? You're trying to sell me something? Are you crazy? Are you, you're a pickle sucker. Damn pickle suckers. I can't stand you damn pickle suckers. They call you some filthy names over the phone. One guy tried to upsell to a home equity loan instead of a home equity line of credit. Now, if you don't know, home equity, I used to sell home equity lines of credit or the phone with Wells Fargo. And a home equity line of credit is an open and revolving line of credit that's tied into your mortgage and is tied into the equity you've built up in your house. And if you have it, you're not paying on it. You don't pay on it or you're not charging any interest until you actually draw funds from the line. So the bank doesn't make any money off of it until they actually draw money off of the line of credit. So our job was to upsell to a loan so the bank would start making money off of it right away. So this one guy calls in and goes, hey, I'd like to talk to you about the home equity line of credit. I, here's the value of my house. I pull credit on him. I go, well, that's great. Looks like you, looks like you got great credit and you qualify for the home equity line. How about this? Let, let's get you set up right away with a home equity loan. You can start using that money right away with a fixed interest rate. And he goes, what? I go, home equity loan, how about that? And he goes, do you want an umbrella? 
And I said, an umbrella? He goes, yeah. Do you want an umbrella? I said, no. And he goes, well, I don't want a home equity loan. I'm like, okay. And you're supposed to have all these, your bottles. You're supposed to have all this stuff. And if you don't, if you don't upsell and they pull calls on you where they hear that you're not upselling, you get written up. You get automatically written up because the reason they push these home equity loans so much is because upper management, way at the top of the ivory tower, they're like, you down at the bottom of the tower, you there, the very bottom dwellers, the managers of the call center, you must get your people to upsell. If you don't, you will be fired. If you do get them to upsell, your bonuses are at a tiered level. You can get a $5,000 bonus for this amount of sales, a $10,000 bonus for this amount of sales, or a $20,000 bonus. Ha 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 Push those sales and you'll make money. You'll have the Mercedes of your dreams. So they push and they push and they push. So the managers will come out on the floor and they'll have bells and stuff. And every time you get a sale, I don't have a bell here, but they put the, you know, those little uh, countertop bells they have like in delis and stuff. And so every time somebody gets a sale, you're supposed to ring the bell. Ding! You have to get up out of your seat. You're not allowed to get out of your seat. This is what I don't get. You're not allowed to get out of your seat to go to the bathroom. But they put this bell like on the other side of the call center and tape it to a wall. And you gotta get up, run over to the bell, ring the bell. The supervisor goes, Woo! Way to go, Pete! He got a sale! Woo! Oh my God. Every call center was like that. And in some cases, if you got a sale, you got to go over to the Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune, and you spin the wheel to get a prize. And the prize is always like, you know, I don't know if he can, I don't know if he's in the picture. Mr. Oingo Boingo, I've got him, I've got him in uh, microphone bondage. Uh, he's tied to my microphone stand. But you get, you get something stupid like, like a little stuffed animal, or you'll get a koosh ball. Or you'll get like a, a toy game of chess or something. Oh, or you'll get a coupon to Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, or Pizza Hut. Oh, it's so exciting. So you, you, if you get a sale, it's hard enough getting the sale. And it's very trying because not everybody's a salesperson. Then they humiliate you. Then they humiliate you in front of like a hundred other people. I always find it humiliating. I gotta go ring the bell. Just leave me alone. I don't want to ring the bell. Oh, you got to ring the bell and then spin the wheel of fortune so you can get your gift. Oh, it's so exciting. But I don't understand why you make somebody get up as a grown man like myself, walk across the room, ring a bell, have everybody cheer, then spin a wheel. Like it's, it's a wheel, the wheel of fortune, every call center. I don't know where they get these wheels. They must buy them at a novelty shop or they make them out of cardboard or something. You know, they got the little the, 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 the thing that hits the those little posts around the edge of it and it's so it's like so embarrassing but they they treat people like children they they, they reprimand you if you go to the bathroom too much you know they reprimand you if you eat they reprimand you if you talk they reprimand you if you move they reprimand you if you're late they reprimand you i even got reprimanded if i was early i would get there early and log into my phone early and start taking calls before my chef and one lady ran over to my desk she said what are you doing you're locked in before your chef you might have to be paid overtime. Ah. Uh. Well, she was so totally livid that I had clocked in like five minutes before my shift. She said, like, throws all of our numbers off. It throws all of our numbers off. You know, right there, my testicles fell off and rolled across the room because she had totally demasculated me in front of everybody. It was like, it wasn't a private conversation. It wasn't, it wasn't kept secret. It was well known that I was being reprimanded and, and, put down because I wanted to come in early. Oh no, we'll have to pay overtime. Anyway, so the upselling is something they, they put you in. So they put you in training and not only do you have to do customer service, not only have to, do you have to know this entire portfolio of products and how to talk on the phone and how to give good customer service. You've got to know how to sell. In, in training, they, they tell you about these wonderful bonuses and these wonderful commissions that you're going to get if you upsell. You're going to get these wonderful bonuses that you're going to be able to buy wonderful, glorious things. like. Oh, they always give you the example of one of our reps bought a brand new BMW with his bonus. Oh, he drives it to work every day. Have you ever seen Jimmy's BMW? It's gorgeous. And they, they, they promise you that these bonuses are going to be so out, out, outrageously wonderful and fun and 
you're gonna get so much money. But when you get on the floor and when you're in training, you find out that the bonus structure is so impossible to meet that you rarely you rarely get paid commission or bonuses, even if you're selling. So they make it so that you have to sell so much before you get paid. So if you only bring in like like at Wells Fargo, if the only thing you were getting people to sign up for were home equity lines instead of home equity loans, you only got paid like a very small percentage of anything from a home equity line. You didn't even barely get credit for it. So that was the incentive to push for the home equity loans. Or they, they tier it, some companies tier it, like if you don't, if you make this tier, you get paid this amount of money. If you make this tier, you get this, this amount of money. If you get paid at this, you, you know, if you sign up this many people, but it's almost impossible, extremely impossible to get paid the kind of money they promised you in training. They dang a little carrot in front of you and say, oh, oh, you can get that BMW just like Jimmy has. Oh, and you look gorgeous in his BMW. And selling is not something that is for everybody. Some people are salesmen and some people aren't. Some people have a natural gift for it and pick it up quick. Other people it takes a long time. Um, and you have to, it's a, it's a skill, it's a craft. It's something you have to work at. I even got, you know, when I was out at, the, at Wells Fargo, I bought a book on sales. It was like a Dale Carnegie or something book of sales about assuming the sale and stuff like that. But this book was written in like 1950. It didn't really help me, but so there you have it. So whenever you call into a call center and you hear the sweet young thing on the phone try to get you to get a credit card or get a new HBO package or get a go from basic cable to advanced cable or to the to the I don't know what they call it. You go from basic cable to every channel in the world that you don't you'll never watch package. That's upselling, um, and then they're asked to do it. And they're told they're, it's demanded of you. You have to do it, and if you don't do it. It affects your bonuses, it affects your, your um, ratings as a rep, it affects your um, reviews when you get reviewed as, a, as an employee. It totally just affects everything. It, it totally messes with everything, your to whole existence in the call center. And I think it affects the um, customer experience. The customers don't want to call in, they stop wanting to call in, they don't want to call in. Um, most people get angry when you upsell. Most people don't want to talk to you anymore. They hang up. They call you names. They're like, F you, buddy. And they click, blah, dial tone. So that's another aspect of the call center world that uh, is crazy. Here are the sirens. Do you hear the sirens? They're coming to get me. It's probably Verizon Wireless as well as Fargo. Stop talking about us on YouTube, man. It's a great company. So if you like my videos, first off I wanna say, if you like my videos, please subscribe. Please subscribe. <laughs> so there you have it. Press one for murder. Buy your copy now. Bye. At the tone, press one for murder.